How's it going, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Trailmakers Creations. Today, we're going to be starting with the Stealth Tick. Because he's so very small, and uh, he's so very stealthy. So, this has no forward propulsion, only vertical. So, there's no steering as well, per se, except for the seat itself. We got a couple of cannons. It's actually a fairly simple build. Nice and small. Again, I always start small because they always end up huge once I keep going. Uh, so the stealth tick here is we use Q and E to rotate our cannons. Oh, and uh, it's, it's not aquatic. So the stealth tick just uses our basic, uh, I want to call it force stabilization, like a force gyro. It's just using the uh, opposite spinning uh, of the helicopter engines to create that torque in opposite directions so it gets rid of those small little movements little wobbles keeps everything a lot more stable in the air it's not connected to any angle sensors or anything so we just have our leaning as our steering so we can lean back this way we can slow down we can hover straight up like this we can come down and land left shift is to fire our cannons as you can see it barely barely has enough thrust to lift itself in the air so we don't want to be dropping out of the sky too quick or else we can't slow ourselves down so, like I said, Q and E will rotate our cannons. We also have some lights on there, so we can see in the dark. And this is actually quite easy for destroying a target because it's so small. You can just fly. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Roll it over and up, up. No, over, over, over. No, okay, we're upside down. That's no good. So yeah, Stealth Tick, just using a small form factor, I guess a small frame, and just a couple of thrusters using the seat steering to propel you around. Okay, so you can just fly by things, and it's pretty easy to, uh, once you got your guns set to the right angle, pretty easy to take out your targets on the ground. So I will be uploading that to the shop if you're interested in a small seat controlled flyer for killing your buddies. All right, let's take a look at our next build. All right, so our next awesome build is Saturn's Ring. As you can see, it's a big ring of sails. Some of you may have seen this on some of the public servers that I've been playing on over the last couple of days. And uh, just to throw it out there, don't be so toxic. Quit blowing people up at the spawn points every time they try and spawn in a creation. All right, so the ring is just simple sails, the big sail. And of course, we got the square sail in the middle there, just to stretch it out a little bit. And then we got some steering back here with some hinges. And that is it. We got mini thrusters underneath the front in the middle and a little bit of hinges here on the front section that angles that up like 10 degrees, I think it is. And there we go, the flying ring. We have mini thrusters underneath on the front and on the sides for turning. So we stay kind of level. There is no... Uh, no yaw per se, so once we get a little uh, crooked, we want to try and uh, use our stabilizers in the back to level us out a little. But nice and slow, nice and easy, nice and quiet. Enjoy the peace. This is also a good, uh, a good creation for stunt flying. So if you got somebody with a small plane, uh, I was in one of the servers actually this uh, last couple of days, and uh, actually someone did that without even being uh, being asked to. I was flying around in this, and they just flew their little plane right through it, right through the ring. No problem. So that would be a good uh, a good test for your piloting skills. Now, this is not aquatic, as, as you can see. So let's see, we'll try and rebuild it. It doesn't even float. It doesn't even float. So yeah, that's the Saturn ring. Pretty easy to fly, nice and stays nice and level because of all the stability from those sails. So you can just zip over top of the water as well, or you can use it as a ring, like a landing. Use it as a, a throwing ring, a horseshoe. See if you can uh, challenge your friends to try and loop around something, land over top of something, take it no damage. And see how this stays nice and level over top of the water like this? That's great as well. You can have a boat floating in there. We can bounce off of the water, but if too much of it gets in the water, then it won't lift off anymore because it is all thruster based. So. so that is Saturn's ring. I'll be uploading that as well. Nice, simple build. Let's see if anybody out there can build a... What's the biggest ring you can make like this out of sails? I wonder. 
You know, could do like a 500 complexity, just a monster's ring. I have no idea how big the build grid is that it'll let you build in, but uh, that might be something I'll be checking out later. So stay tuned for that. And if you are enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button. Hit that notification bell to let you know when the next one comes out. And let's go take a look at our next build. On the same note as the stealth tech, small builds, I usually try and start small. Try and make it as small as possible. This is a 15-piece VTOL plane. Prop plane. No jets. One propeller. And the seat. 15 pieces in total. And it actually flies amazingly well. So we sit in the seat. As we can see here, we are in our seat. Can't see anything because of that green blocks on the ground, though. It doesn't make it very good. But we can see that we have a couple of helicopter engines on either side, which I'll hit number one. Those are my stabilizers for leaning forward and backwards. Just a little bit of stability actually helps. Again, some small fins, small set of wings, which are rarely ever used. They don't generate a lot of lift. And we can see our little couple of glass pieces there. That's supposed to be the cockpit. And so we can take off vertically like this. And then we just lean forward. And we're flying. Actually handles actually really well for something this small. Okay, we're flying in our little Cessna. Whee! So that is actually a tiny, tiny plane. Again, it's got to be pretty small for that one single propeller to actually be able to move it around. But there's us down there underneath. Whee! Looking down at the ground. You can see it flies pretty straight. Just got a couple of hinges there to angle our propeller up and down. And everything else is seat controlled. We've got a nice roll. I don't know if we could do a barrel roll. Uh-oh. And guess what? This is not aquatic either. Pop out. There we go. And that's what sucks too is when I jump out of the seat, if I try and land like this and then jump out of the seat, it actually pops my propeller off. Not cool. Okay, so we'll take off vertically. Get a little bit of forward speed just so we can keep ourselves in the air. There we go. A little bit of lift from them front wings. And then again, so we'll fly over to the beach spawn point over here. And then we will land, attempt to land vertically and not take any damage. And again, it's, it's a lot easier to land and not take any damage seeing as how we have, don't have any weight really, other than the heaviest thing on this thing is the seat. And we can't really let ourselves drop too fast. Oh, or in the water, because we're not aquatic. Take two. We will fly through the tunnel, just because we can. Not bad for speed either, 140 kilometers an hour for such a small plane. One prop. We will fly like this. We'll come through this way, maybe. Maybe we'll risk flying through the canyon here. Do we risk it? Do we risk it? Are we good enough? Are we? Oh, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Nope, obviously not good enough. All right, take three. Oh, we gotta go through the tunnel, man. Gotta go through the tunnel. It's part of what you do, right? Tunnel time. Any flyer. It's a good way of seeing if you got as much control as you think you got. So we'll fly through there. We're not gonna risk the canyon because that's just death waiting to happen. You gotta be moving quick to get through there. This doesn't quite have the control surfaces it needs for fancy flying. So we wanna come like this. And then we want to go up, and then we want to come straight down. Ta-da! So, I don't know if I'm going to name this thing. This is just tiny. It's just a tiny plane. So, if you got a good name for this, leave it down in the comments below. And uh, we'll name it that, and then upload it to the shop. Or you could probably just build one yourself. It's actually really easy. If you just pause this video, you'll probably see all the parts that you need right here. And away you go. All right. On to the next build. Right, and for the final build of our video, we have a Wide Wing Dragon. I have no name for this one either. Uh, we could just call it the Orange Dragon. But uh, again, if you come up with another funky name for this thing, leave it down in the comments below. I do read the comments, so I'll be having a look-see to what we're going to name this. So, you can see this is pretty wide. It's got some big wings. Very minimal build as far as in the body. We've just got some basic normal square parts with our teeth looking parts from the face tab and then some uh, big fins back here for our tail with a couple of hinges in between there for steering we do have eight thrusters here this is how this is powered it's not an ornithopter uh, even though it probably could be if I set the timing up and everything 
but it uses a slightly different way for, for lifting the wings. Rather than having a single servo, because they can get floppy once you've got weight on them, so with wings this big and this much weight on it, I figured I'm going to use pistons on either side of a bar to raise or lower the wings to get the tilt that we need. So our seat is in the head here. As you can see, if I lift one way or the other, you can see these pistons here actually lift on those free-floating servos. So the same thing with forward and back. It just lifts those two bars that have the wings connected to it so that I don't have to deal with the uh, inconsistencies of those servos. So we do have landing gear on this guy. He's got some legs that pop out there. You can't really see them too well in there. I can turn his head to the left and to the right. And as you can see, when we turn left and right, that also angles the second half of the wing upwards. So that really helps really well with turning. This thing actually has really, really good control. As far as taking off, all we need to do is hit A and D at the same time to bring the wings up and then it'll flap down and that'll lift us high enough off the ground so we hit space for our thrust and then A and D together and we let them go and he lifts himself up into the air no problem. The legs fold up under here, as you can see, our automatic landing gear. They're connected to a sensor underneath his neck. And you can see that we have awesome control. Flies straight really well. When he left shift opens his mouth, as well as fires the 10 cannons sequentially. So this thing is seriously dangerous. So things on the ground tend to get messed up pretty good. This is like a carpet bombing dragon. Right, so. Not hard to destroy things with this puppy. I love the shadow on the ground too. Fly over top of people's creations and be like, what the hell is that? That's a big dragon, that's what that is. So lots of control, as you can see, we can arc over this way, we can arc upwards, we can even do a barrel roll, all the way, or not a barrel roll, a loop, I should say. And see how that steering with those wings tips comes in like that? You get the angle in the body, the tail, and then the tip of the wing comes up. So really, really easy to control, really easy to fly fun to just fly around because it's so stable, right? I mean, you can just let go of everything. You just even angle up like this. See, that's what makes it so easy to land as well, right? You just come up like this, you see the feet automatically come out. Doop, no problem. Then you want to go up in the air again, lift the wings, hit the thrust, let go of the wings, and away you go. Here it comes up, folds up flat underneath the body, and you're off to see the wizard. The wonderful Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Trailmakers. I don't know where he lives, but you could probably go find him with this thing. He don't want you to come find him, though. So yeah, leave a name for this thing in the bottom as well. I have no idea what to call it. It could just be the Fireball. It's orange and red. Or, orange and red. Orange and yellow. And it does quite a bit of damage. It could be the... Oh, I think I just broke his legs. Yeah, just tuck those away, man. Don't let anyone see that. You didn't see that, right? Alrighty, guys. That's all I got for you in this video. Stay tuned for the next one, though, because we're going to be messing with some horses. I uh, built a couple of different horse designs, so don't forget to hit that uh, notification bell to find out when that one comes out. And we will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.